Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for July 18th, 2016. Uh, unfortunately, neither uh, Kevin nor Diane can be with, with us uh, for because of uh, summer travel. So we're, we're running with a board of three uh, this evening. Uh, first up on the agenda is a proclamation for the Arlington Soapbox Derby. Uh, is there somebody here who is here to from the Soapbox Derby? All right, I will, I'll, I'll read the, what we've got tonight. Whereas the All-American Soapbox Derby is the second oldest nonprofit organization in the country, and whereas the Massachusetts chapter of the All-American Soapbox Derby is the only chapter in Massachusetts, and whereas the Arlington, Massachusetts Soapbox Derby is in its eighth year of operation, and whereas during the 2014 Arlington, Massachusetts local race on Eastern Avenue, Campbell Conrad won the Masters Division race and advanced to the international race in Akron, Ohio, and whereas during the race in Akron, Ohio, Campbell Conrad, representing Carlington Mass, was able to, in single elimination, eliminate 72 master class cars from around the country for the first time in the history of Soapbox Derby, a car from Massachusetts was able to take the first place trophy. And during the 2015, the last one was 14, during the 2015 Arlington, Massachusetts local race in the Eastern Avenue, Bailey Martin won the Masters Division and advanced to the international race in Akron, Ohio. And during the race in Akron, Ohio, Bailey Martin, representing Arlington, Mass, was able to, in single elimination, eliminate 73 master class cars from around the country. And for the second time in the history of Soapbox Derby, a car from Massachusetts was able to take the first place trophy. And whereas Arlington, Massachusetts is now a soapbox derby dynasty and will be traveling to Akron, Ohio again this July to defend the Arlington Mass title as world champion Masters Soap Class, excuse me, Masters Class Soapbox Derby. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Board of Selectmen, congratulate the Arlington, Massachusetts Soapbox Derby participants as they defend their world champion title, signed by all of us. So. Congratulations to them and good luck yes. and safe racing. Making us proud. And great to hear that we're not the only ones who care about the soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion? I move that we approve. Second. A uh, uh, motion and uh, by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Consent agenda. We have uh, the minutes of, let's see, let's see if I can pull this up in a good way right here. Uh, no, I think I got it, but thank you. Um, we have uh, the minutes of their uh, cons under consent agenda. We've got the minutes of the meeting for June 20th, 2016. We have reappointment to the Community Preservation Committee of Clarissa Rowe, term to expire June 30th, 2018. We have the reappointment of our poet laureate, Miriam Levine, term to expire July 18th, 2017. We have a request for a special one day beer and wine license on August 7th, 2016 for the Whittemore Robbins House. For the summer soiree, at the, uh, which is by, for, um, by Paul McGaffigan, uh, is the applicant of the Cyrus Dallin Art Museum. And for approval, International of uh, Arlington International Film Festival banners, April Rank, ex executive director. Is anyone from any, with any of those items here to talk to us tonight? Yes. Come on up. Is that Ms. Levine? Thank you. Welcome. I just want to thank you all for this appointment and just tell you just briefly a few things that have gone on uh, with the Poet Laureate position. Among them, uh, workshops at Arlington Catholic High School, the Germain Lawrence School, the Senior Center, Robbins Library, and twice a week drop-in sessions at the library that are open to all Arlington residents. Though I think a few from Lexington have also snuck in. So again, I'm here to just to thank you and to say that I'm very much looking forward to the events of this year. Thank you. Thank you very much for your service. I saw another hand. Come on up. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, April Rank from the Arlington International Film Festival. We are pleased to be back in Arlington uh, this year with the festival, October 27th through 30th at the Capitol Theater. Um, we just wanted to let you know how gracious uh, the owner has been working with us uh, in order for us to be able to bring the festival back to town. Um, we are, uh, ATED uh, has agreed to sponsor us for our request of banners. 
we have asked for uh, four banners in uh, the, the regular three by sevens that we've been hanging previously in the center, Arlington Center. And I forgot to put in my proposal six of the square uh, banners in Arlington, uh, East Arlington. Um, we've checked with the East Arlington Committee. In fact, they've actually requested that we put our, uh, some little banners up. Um, we would like to be able to put them up uh, after town day and leave them up through the festival date uh, ending, uh, uh, let's see, October 30th. Um, so that's why I'm in front of you. Cool. Thank you. Great. Um, Marie, I sent an email and then I forgot to even see if you replied because <laughs> I was busy this afternoon. should rain but it's not going to then it would be a week later because we our leave I was out for the following week mm -hmm. so and other fine. than that and we may have a little just with two of them down towards the east and we're depending upon the Arlington Center but for the most part it's fine but we'll great so we can coordinate yes, if yeah. that's approved if it's approved yes. you can coordinate. Mm -hmm. thank you I'm delighted to see that you're full, like, back in Arlington all the way thank you Thank you. And I just wanted to share one quick bit of uh, interesting news that we just received. We've been invite, invited by the Rose Kennedy Greenway to do a shorts program um, on the Greenway in Dewey Square, September the 15th. They have invited us to hang our banners. They have asked if they could do press releases for us. And again, this is just uh, another way of getting the word out about Arlington and who we are and what we do here. That's great. So that, that's right by my office, and they do really good events there. That's really very exciting. Yes, yeah. they do. Cool. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else here for any of the consent item agendas? Move approval. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Next up, we have an appointment for the Open Space Open Space Committee. Brian Kelder. Mr. Kelder, are you here? Come on up. Welcome. Thank you. So we've got your resume in front of you. Why don't you just share with us a little bit about yourself and what, what's motivating you to join this committee? Okay, I'm Brian Kelder. Uh, I, so I moved to Arlington about five years ago or four years ago. Uh, I'm, the, I'm an ecologist, so I do uh, river restoration work for a nonprofit on the North Shore. Um, and I've just been interested in getting involved in the town that I now call home. So I, I saw the opening for the Open Space Committee uh, contacted uh, the town manager and spoke with Ann LaRoyer, uh, and I've been attending the meetings um, as an observer for a few months and uh, feel like I can contribute, um, and they seem willing to have me help contribute. Thank you very much. So, Thank you so much for your service. All right. Move approval. All right. Second. Yep. Volunteers like you are what make it work, so thank you very, very much. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, next up, Arlington Preservation Fund, the ARB designee, um, Gen designating Jennifer Raitt, Director of Planning and Community Development. Ms. Raitt. Good evening. Good Jennifer evening. Raitt. How did we manage to get you on the agenda more than once tonight? I don't know. I don't know what happened. Marie, are you, are you scheduling it all for us now? That's right. <laughs> Tell us about the board. Uh, the, the work of the Preservation Fund. I attended the first meeting in May and uh, learned more about the work that they do, um, making loans, and the work that they plan to do with updating the website, a brochure, um, and other, of other, uh, other materials to do some more outreach to people to let people know about the fund. And I'm excited to join the committee. Cool. Great. Any further questions? No. Motion? Move approval. Second. <clears throat> All right, a motion from Mr. Carroll. Thank you very much. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Appointment, Zoning Recodification Working Group. Um, I think I'll turn it over to Mr. Chaplain. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. So uh, a, a brief introduction. Um, as the board may recall, uh, at town meeting, there was a vote taken uh, to establish a committee to study a number of the residential zoning changes that had been discussed by town meeting but having no action taken on them. Also part of the master plan was to move forward and uh, begin a study and uh, eventually recommend a change to recodify all of the zoning bylaws. So through working with the master plan implementation committee, uh, myself and Ginny Raitt, 
put together a recommendation of forming a zoning recodification working group, and then below that, a residential study group. The residential study group to study specifically the residential and neighborhood development issues, uh, the zoning recodification group to study the larger um, recodification effort, which is probably a longer effort. Uh, so over the past uh, several weeks, uh, Jenny and I have been interviewing a number of interested candidates uh, for both of these groups. Uh, tonight, I have before you what would be my at-large recommendations for the zoning recodification group, as well as at-large recommendations for the residential study group, uh, to go along with representatives of the real estate industry and the development slash construction industry. There will be more citizen representation that Jenny and I interviewed that we'll be recommending to the town moderator to appoint as town meeting members. But uh, as of the meeting tonight, I haven't connected with the moderator to make those official. So I know some of these folks are here tonight to meet the board because we actually wrapped up some of these interviews today. Uh, they couldn't all be here, so I would hope the board uh, would grant them an indulgence to come at a future meeting so that we can get the work of this committee started. Uh, I do think uh, I saw Nancy uh, Flynn Barvik here. I, I, so if it's up, yep. up to you, if you want to take people one at a time uh, as they're here, um, so have everybody have stack up. Or? Yeah. Okay. Because it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So if you are Nancy Flynn Barvik, Bill Coppathorn, Jonathan Nyberg, Winnell Evans, Pazzi Meatnin, Elizabeth Pyle, or Steve McKenna, come on up. Sure. I'm Nancy. Hi. Thank you. Uh, Nancy Flynn Barvik, and I can't hear very well back then, so what did you want us to say? <laughs> I hadn't told you yet, so it's a, yeah, you're all set. Okay. Uh, could you just introduce yourself a little bit about what you're looking for to accomplish on the committee? What, th so anything like that? Well, my name is Nancy Flynn Barvik, and I wanted to be on this committee partly because uh, for some research that I was doing last year, I read through our zoning and had a difficult time. It was cumbersome um, going back and forth. I'm an attorney. I've been doing contracts and things for about 15 years. And even I found it a little cumbersome. And so when I found out that they were doing a working group, I thought that it was something that I could help with and um, something that I could serve the town doing. So that's why I'd like to be on it. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Any questions from? No. Okay. So I'm going to I'm going to do a vote on everybody all at the end. So Great. thank Thanks. you. Well, yep. Do we want to vote this one separately? This is a separate working group. So. Um, sure. Uh, do I hear a motion? Yeah. I'm Second. Okay. And uh, Doug, just to double check, all of these appointments are uh, town manager consent of selectmen, is that correct? Okay. All right. So I have a motion from uh, Steve, uh, seconded by Joe for uh, Nancy Flynn Barvik. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. One down. Hi. <laughs> Winnell Evans. I'm for the residential study group. Um, and my interest in this comes from being a long-term resident of Arlington, almost 30 years now, so nowhere near being a townie, but still. Uh, and I see that Arlington has so many pressures on it from so many different directions right now. So I'm very interested in getting involved in this and see what we can do to maintain what it is about Arlington that draws people here and that we love. I want to make sure that the master plan does not get lost in the, in the furor. Um, and to see what we can do to keep Arlington welcoming and affording, affordable, but also to preserve our neighborhoods, which I think people care deeply about. I know I do. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Welcome. Hi. Uh, my name is Steve McKenna. I'm a resident of Arlington, real estate agent in Arlington, and uh, I am pleased to say that I was asked and want to be on this board for the residential study, um, hoping to achieve an opportunity to have some balanced construction, quality construction, and some uh, look at affordable housing throughout the town that uh, I think represents the, the town in itself in its diverse ways. Okay. That's it. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any of our other nominees here? I don't so, see anybody else here. Sorry. Okay. So I've said in the past that I wanted to hold, but it, and I've also said that there, when there are times when it makes sense to just do it and then bring him in, and given that uh, the manager is on a schedule that he's really trying to get this to work, I'm totally fine approving That's this one absolutely. without them. Okay. So I'll, I'll move to approve the um, <coughs> recommended appointments of the manager with the request that the other applicants come in at a future date and meet us. Uh, I'll second in. Uh, just a, a quick comment. I, I do appreciate um, how fast this was put together. Um, I think what we saw at town meeting was that there's a real need for this, and I think that um, this will lead to a balanced approach moving forward um, for town meeting's consideration, and I look forward to seeing the work of the committee. So, thank you. 
And um, I think, Winnell, you said a lot of things. You, you wrapped up a lot of the challenges in your speech really well. I think you talked about how we, um, there are parts of the town that we really, really want to keep exactly the way they are, but at the same time, it's not possible. And so therefore, we have to figure out which parts we're going to change so that we can keep the parts we want. And that's a, that's a real challenge. So um, thank you, all of you, for, your, uh, for volunteering. Uh, so I have a motion for Mr. Kira, a second from second. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Were you okay? No, okay. <laughs> he looked at me like I was running a little bit too fast or something. <laughs> Okay, next up, common victualler license for Nina Trattoria and Pizzeria, from Angelo Carbini. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so uh, we've got your application. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your restaurant and what you're looking to do? Um, so I'm a been, I've been a resident in Arlington since 2005, and I've been in this business for uh, about over 40 years. I <clears throat> originally from Sardinia, Italy. It's a small region in Italy which is focused on mainly or <clears throat> organic products. Um, it's about 350 days a year of sunshine, so it, the weather allows to grow wow. fresh products. And <clears throat> I've noticed that uh, there is a movement in, in, the, in Massachusetts and in the country to, <clears throat> to bring good nutrition uh, in the restaurants as well in in the homes. Cool. So, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing fine. You, you're talk <clears throat> and the good news is you're talking about something you like. <laughs> exactly. So I have passion for it. And it's, I'm a little nervous because it's my first venture. And uh, um, I'm not sure what the process is uh, to get the permit. So, but, so this is what I, I want to propose as my experience. Um, I was trained in different departments. I went to hotel school in Italy, so I traveled um, around the world about four times. Uh, I've been working on the cruise ships for uh, different cruise liners, um, the Cunard Line, Gloucester Cruise Line, and Norwegian Cruise Line. And I also worked in the Caribbean for about 10 years, always focusing in different departments. Um, so I've now been in Boston working as a waiter for 10 years. But I was experienced as a cook, so I'll be cooking the food myself from scratch. Right. Um, like I said, offering the best products that are available, um, offering uh, price, quality, and uh, so. Thank you. That's my uh, wish me success. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there for sure, <laughs> definitely. Right. Right. Thank you. Mr. Byrne. Uh, I'll move approval, and um, I'm really happy that this is going the location is. I think I hear pretty frequently that we need some more, uh, you know, some new restaurants or more restaurants and more options up the heights. So I think uh, this is a very welcome addition. Right, thank you. I, I just wanted to say um, I'm reading your proposed menu and it looks absolutely incredible. So. <laughs> incredible. So, uh, as, <laughs> as the uh, as the grandson of Italian immigrants myself, I really look forward to uh, this tradition continuing in Arlington. So thank you, and I'd like to move approval. I, th I think I'm, Mr. Well, Brad beat you too. But I'd like to second approval. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you for choosing Arlington. Thank you. Yep. Next up, we have a request for a food vendor license from the local fair to Lake Street. Carolyn Huffstetler, um, Michelle Wax, and Rita Ng. I apologize if I missed any of those. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, so we are for the food vendor license to operate or open the local fair. Um, and we're going to bring in a whole bunch of Boston area local products, a lot of them from Arlington, um, all handmade to make it easy for people to support local and shop locally in the area. Uh, so tell me, it, 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 would you say items like food, like all food or a mix? Yeah, or? yeah. Okay. so we individually have three um, brands that we're coming together and we'll provide I Do Cookies, French Magaroons, and Nut Milks. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll have all our products and then also bring in other local food products as well as like soaps and things like that that just kind of are all made in the Arlington area. Okay. Mr. Carroll. I am happy to move approval. Right. Some draw conditions set forth. We've, we've had organic, now we've got local. It's, it's, it's <laughs> sounding good tonight. <laughs> well, yeah. I'll second, and I have another welcome addition, so thank you. Yeah. Great. 
Excellent. Thank um, you. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, Sidewalk Cafe Permit, Commune Kitchen, 203A Broadway. Richard Nidwiz, Nidwicki? I apologize if I got that one wrong. Hi. Welcome. Tell us about, uh, you're, you're looking to put a seating out on the sidewalk. Yeah, just three or four tables and some chairs. Just, you know, it's hot and so is the cafe. But <laughs> <laughs> so it'd be nice to get, you know, somewhere for people to sit outside. Okay. Um, I'll move approval, but um, you know, I, people are raving about commune, so um, thank you very You're much. Very kind. Yeah, it seems uh, I haven't been there yet, but I promise I will. But um, we're hearing a lot of good things, so awesome. Thank you. Thanks very much. And, I, and I'll second with a question. Um, is there any alcohol involved in the cafe? No, 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 sir. Okay. I was only asking that question because we're taking up some possible changes to the to our regulations soon. And sure, I'll stick around. Sure, that's okay. <laughs> no surprises. <laughs> And I, I just want to note that we've got a report from uh, both the, the um, inspector and from the um, com Committee on Disability talking about the fact that the, the accessibility and the layout and all that stuff. I just for mentioning that we've got that in our packet. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Next up, we have a Sidewalk Cafe policy update. I think uh, given the, yes. I'd like to move that we table this to um, our, our next meeting. I know that um, some of the changes that we're discussing are the types of things that some of our colleagues are very passionate about. So I think we should have a full board. I did. I was thinking about I, I'm, in, I, I'm going to agree with you. But I was also thinking about it. I feel like I can see into the future. And I know that there's one on one side and one on the other. And it's going to be the three of us who are voting it anyway. <laughs> 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 but you know, so true. it'll be a robust discussion. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, I, I will second that, but I echo your sentiment. Yeah, I do. All those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. I'm going to get in trouble for that one. Um, <laughs> approval caterer's license from, sorry, like a, oh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Heim, your name's on this one. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, what you have in front of you are a suite of kidders license policies from the town of Arlington. The ABCC developed a new license uh, for service of alcohol oriented towards kidders. It's important to understand that this license is uh, fundamentally different than all the other licenses that uh, we currently, we previously had to serve alcohol, and essentially what these, uh, the suite of policies and uh, requirements reflects is that in order to serve. Um, in order to serve alcohol, particularly on town properties where there's a lot of catering done, such as town hall and other things, uh, there are certain requirements that we're requiring. Uh, there are certain requirements that we want to make sure are understood by all caterers who would be serving alcohol uh, for any of these related events. And then there's a few other things, but I think it's relatively straightforward. We're just trying to codify some good practices that we want to uh, both maintain uh, and update a little bit with respect to alcohol service for catered events. Can you tell me how these would get used in practice? Like, is it like they would get, like the, you get them with the license, or like how does that? So the, I see there's a couple different signature spaces. Sure. So the uh, the caterer's license itself, it's important to understand, is rather than have caterers apply for an unending s series of one-day licenses, they essentially get a license from the state, and we don't exercise a lot of control over those licenses, unlike some of our other licenses. Uh, what this essentially does is say that you have to uh, read and accept. Uh, certain certain uh, conditions if you want to serve alcohol on, on, on town properties. That's essentially what it is. I, I guess uh, maybe my question then is for is maybe for Marie. Like Marie, like I'm trying to understand literally how do these who how do these get into the hands of the caterer? Who collects them? Like all that stuff. It would go through, it would go through Patsy for renting the Whittemore Robins of the town hall, and then it would eventually come to us to get the approval for the alcohol license for that one day. So you'd still be informed, but it, this way it's a group that have already been um, licensed by the state and what have you for the, so it would make it easier for the caterer. Am I right? To, yeah, basically whenever anybody wants to use uh, town hall space, in order to do so, they've got to agree to certain things that, that mostly get funneled through Patsy. Uh, but um, 
but this is just adding an additional uh, layer that they need to make sure that they read and understand that, for example, if you want to serve alcohol on town property as a caterer, you can't just serve cheese and crackers. Even though there's an ABCC regulation about food service accompanying alcohol, and there's some other town laws that speak to that, this would be directly forwarded, uh, would be forwarded through the uh, whoever is hosting the event to the caterer, and in order to serve alcohol on that um, on the day of the event, they need to make sure that they return it and get it to the selectman's office in Patsy before they can do so. Okay, I may be being dense, so I'm going to ask another way. So we've got three different documents here that each one of them says manager catering service. So we're expecting three different signatures, right? They're like, or three does the same person to sign three different documents? Is that? Um, it's it's it is uh, possible. One is a general uh, yep. guideline and requirement that's existed for a long time. It doesn't speak specifically um, to alcohol. It's it's but it includes reference to our alcohol documents. The other one is the supplemental requirements for service on town property. That's the sort of most detailed one that we want to make sure that the, that's that the manager of the catering service is reading. Um, and then finally. There are some general guidelines that we just felt like was important to provide uh, to you so you could kind of have the full sense of what's going on. A lot of these things have been, have these, were these previously informal policies? I think with respect to the catering guidelines and things like that. Would, the caterer would have to be responsible and we'll have an event manager that would be responsible for the town hall just to make sure that they have the insurance and yeah. everything that would still come back to the selectmen and the police to sign off. I think what you're asking me, if I may, if I may interrupt, is is why are there three separate documents? I'm no. not even there yet. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'd probably get there. What am I like? So if I if we do so, if someone wants a like like a like a like a victor license, they come in, they talk to the selectman's office, they fill out the application, they talk to a bunch of different departments. Those departments feed the back. It's like the, it comes to us. You know, we approve it, and then a license is issued. Like I haven't figured out where in the workflow not these. Not fix. This is. But not, I know this is yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. Can I can I take a different sure. place? Sure. So I I think I hear where you're getting yeah. at. So I don't think there's a situation where a caterer is just applying to do work in town hall. There's always an event sponsor, whether it's yep. a town sponsor like the AYCC or someone who's just having a wedding party, that will hire a caterer. And they'll always liaise with Patsy Kramer yep. when they're trying to, to book their event. They then might hire a caterer. And what we're saying is we want Patsy to have these authorized policies to be able to say, you're hiring a caterer, they need to adhere not only to their ABCC licensure, but also to these policies that the town has issued. So these essentially would be them. These are things that you have to sign before you get to rent the building. Before you get to host your event. Yeah. OK. All right. Now we got to where I want to be. Okay. Does that be bad news? <laughs> Joe? No, I'm not be good. No, I, I, I've got another question that might seem I, I'm, I am, this has come up before when we've tried to put specific numbers into um, some of our policies, and I see that we have a list of, of um, you know, types of furniture and, and other equipment that we supply is all specifically spelled out in the policy with quantities and such, and I feel a little bit uncomfortable voting that in as part of a policy um, when, you know, I, I have to guess that, that that could be subject to change. You know the the, the uh, equipment and and um, and furniture inventory that we have, and I'm, I'm wondering if we can't just have a sentence in there that's referencing um, an inventory list that will be provided by the um, the manager, the town okay. hall manager. Would it be? Can we? You just sorry, please. Um, what if we put an asterisk just just said subject to change, uh, so people have an idea. But we're trying to think if I was hosting the event, I'd like to have an idea of the Oh, sure. I think they should get a list. Yeah. I just, I, I don't feel comfortable voting it as part of a policy here. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, are you speaking to the general catering guidelines and requirements, Mr. Carroll? I am. And down at the bottom, there's um, for so inside I, use and there's other equipment available. I think that that is, I suppose if what you're saying, Mr. Carroll, is that there may be other things available. Um, available, well, that could change over time. There may be 399 chairs. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, fair enough. I, I mean, I'd feel more comfortable if this policy that we're voting just set, had a sentence that said, you know, an inventory of, of furniture and equipment that is available, an updated inventory will be provided by the function coordinator. And then 
it might be this exact same list to begin with, but presumably, you know, we, we do upgrades down there fairly regularly, so. We can do that. Uh, you guys comfortable with yeah, that? Yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, oh. Go. Um, I, I guess my only question, I thought that you were going to ask this, is can, can we just consolidate this into one document so you only need one signature? Uh, so, Mr. Byrne, not all caterers are necessarily going to uh, serve alcohol. So that's one reason. Um, the other reason is, is that um, they're uh, slightly different. Um, there's slightly different things that we want to make sure that folks are aware of. We thought it was important to highlight certain things about notifying the Board of Selectmen Office and the Police Department as a separate document to sort of make sure it's very clear that their attention is drawn specifically to this provision, um, especially given that there's a uh, timeline in which you're supposed to conduct that. I suppose they could all be condensed, but I think it was the experience that um, this is kind of the way that it had been set up and was functional for Patsy and other folks to have some things that are guidelines uh, and then some things that are like, these are the real requirements, one for alcohol service and one for general use space. I guess, you know, well, Patsy's the one using it, so if it works for her, I'm happy to keep that um, as is. So. so I'm happy to move approval um, with the suggested uh, change that I put forward. Second. Further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Yes. yes. Could you just have Citizens Open Forum? A gentleman came in to sign up, and we forgot to put it on the agenda. Oh, really? And this is the time that we'd be having it, so it was Sounds good to me. Zimmer. I'm Robert Zimmer. Is he All right, here? we are going to do Citizens Open Forum, and I do not have the full language in front of me, but roughly the nature of the Citizens Open Forum is that we uh, want to hear what, uh, what people have to say, but we can't act on things that happen in Citizens Open Forum because they haven't been properly noticed. So we can hear you and we might refer it to somebody for a further investigation. Um, and, but uh, it, typically people who speak under Citizens Open Forum are restricted to th for three minutes. Uh, so that is the, and I see um, Pam Hallett, were you here for Citizens Open Forum? Actually, no, I'm going to speak. You're going to speak later, great. Yes. And we got Miriam. Um, and I guess Robert Zimer, Zimer? That's me. All right. You you are here for Citizens Open Forum. Yes, I am. All right. So let's start with your name and address, and then tell us what you think. <laughs> you don't want me to go that long. <laughs> um, Actually, I do. My <laughs> my name's Robert Zimer. I live at 113 Irving Street, and I'm here um, because um, across the street from me at 108, and we wrote a letter uh, addressed to. Uh, members of the, uh, the board and uh, the town manager about concerns we have for, uh, about the development that's going on there. And um, thank you for your response. The town manager responded. And uh, at this point, I just want to make sure that the town keeps uh, tabs on uh, this project because it is, um, there were uh, many co-signers of the neighborhood to this letter. Uh, and there are many others uh, affected by this work. And as a little background uh, to those who haven't uh, read the letter, uh, a developer bought uh, the parcel and is doing site work. Uh, he's removed uh, at least uh, 15 feet or so of the uh, ground. He started with backhoes. Uh, he had a rock hammer, which was um, causing uh, disturbances throughout the neighborhood uh, for people who uh, work at home, people who stay at home, waking up, uh, you know, children napping. And while we appreciate the Board of Health monitoring and, and taking decibel measurements, uh, today another piece of equipment uh, was brought on site, and I guess the hammer wasn't effective enough at breaking up all the rock. Uh, I understand it's a drill. So I would ask for the town to keep tabs on this uh, to make sure that they don't exceed the sound uh, bylaw uh, and uh, to make sure that, that our health and safety is, is protected. Okay. So. Thank you. I definitely did read, uh, I read your letter and I read the response and 
Yeah, so I know. Like you got to the right person. Yeah, well, I know that at this point, there, the town, um, you know, there's limited resources because you can play in your sandbox in the backyard or you can play with big trucks and, and, and it's, it's all okay. But uh, there is concern because of the scope of the project. And I encourage you to, to, to look at it. Uh, the, the other thing is it's, it, it is a private way, but there is uh, significant damage to the street with this heavy tracked equipment that we're going to have to deal with. Okay. Okay. Can, so, can I quickly just, uh, I, I, um, I feel like it, it is worth saying, so the Board of Health did let me know that, right. that the developer would be bringing in a drill uh, with the sole aim of reducing sound. It would extend oh, by really? a few days, but actually lo you know, lowering the abrasive jackhammering sound. Okay. And being able to, Drill and break it up. No, I don't really understand how it works. Right. But, you know, drill, break it up, and then jack them. So the, at least the intent is to actually reduce yeah. uh, reduce right. the noise impact. So, so if you could ask the, the board of health to, to monitor when the when the drill uh, is happening, that would yeah. that would be great. Do that. Jay, I see you. Oh, sorry, I no, apologize. No, I thought no. I raised your hand. Um, no, I, I agree that it's um, it's important to um, you know monitor these situations. It is also uh, important to point out that. With staffing in, in town, and there's you know quite a lot of projects going oh, on. Oh, so sure, I know. It's the building all our resources season. just to, to one project. Right. So I think it's but, important to keep that in mind. But um, there's been a steady trickle of people coming up and saying, "What is that noise?" You know. So I thought I, I we needed to bring. Thank it you very much. Reasons. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank all you. right. Anybody else here for Citizens Open Forum? Okay. Thank you, Marie. Approval, red maple tree removal, 58 Richfield Road. Uh, I read this and I've, I have to double check the name. Who's here for this, for the tree? Cynthia Johnston. Cynthia Johnston. Hmm. All right. Uh, supposed to be here. Yeah. I think Mike Rademacher was here because of it, but I don't see right. Cynthia. Hmm. Doesn't look like it. No, Mike's <laughs> going to answer questions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Make the request. Mm. Yeah. Move the table to future Sherman? meeting. Okay. Uh, I will second that, but I, I do think it's important to point out that perhaps it's something we should look at uh, how this process works because it seems like um, any request is denied as long as there's one person who speaks out against it. And I'm not, you know, I'd like it to consider the merits a bit more than just, you know, one or two complaints. But I'm happy to table it and discuss it. Later. Okay. Um, Mr. Rademacher, I'm curious. Did you actually do the, the did you, have you actually seen the tree? <laughs> uh, sure, Mike Rademacher, Director of Public Works. Uh, yes, this was the one tree hearing I held uh, between tree wardens. Is that the tree? <laughs> I want to see if I got the right one. Uh, no. All right, <laughs> so, <laughs> Marie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't believe so. From that picture, I didn't look uh, great. When we bring this back on the agenda, could we ask for a picture? Because I, like, I went over and I don't know which tree we're talking it's about. Essentially, if you're looking at the address, the yeah. tree is just to the uh, right of the driveway, pretty much in line with the front door of the home. Yeah, I definitely looked at the wrong tree. All right. Because I was, <laughs> I was ill equipped to handle this one. All right, we have a motion to table in a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 One parking space, overnight parking, 35 Addison Street. Yeah. All right, without further ado, then we will table that one. Presentation and approval, handicapped parking space project. Who's uh, leading this one? Darcy and Cynthia. Darcy. Welcome. Welcome, good evening, gentlemen. How are Hello. you? Hello, good to see you again. Good to see you. Um, my name is Cynthia Beatrice, and you already know that. Uh, and I represent the Disability Commission this evening. Um, we, we have a little PowerPoint for you, as always. Um, we, first of all, we want to thank you from our last meeting, because from that, we went to um, town meeting, and we got the vote of 183 to 4, which we were very proud of, um, in favor of the warrant article. And as always, it took many dedicated people. Number one, shout out to Mike, who really, we've, we've I think, driven him maybe a little bit crazy, but um, with all our data. Um, it's wider than that, John. Oh, oh, it's wider? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's, so this, down on, yeah. that's up on purpose. What's that? That's up on purpose. 
Thank you. Back up, please. Thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah. Anyway, we have lots of people to thank, but um, Marie, the last time I thanked her, she left also. So I, <laughs> it must be something. Um, but uh, Susan Tennant, Michael, Lisa Molina, Susan James, and the volunteers. And Darcy is a volunteer, community oh, volunteer with her. Could you come closer to the microphone? Like, oh. actually point the mic right at you? Yeah. Perfect. And I always think I have this big voice. Yeah. Um, Darcy Devney is our uh, volunteer along with her husband and her brother and they really did the bulk of the work while I say I chaired it as part of the commission they really did a huge amount of work um, we are very proud of what we've accomplished which I think you have it all in writing um, but we hope you'll agree to give the go-ahead to the DPW um, first off our commitment last March last already right we're here um, was that we would do ground level workshops. We did it. We did all of Mass Ave from Trader Joe's all the way to the end over all our weekends in June. Um, and we talked to over 200 businesses. We shook hands. I even got a few hugs. <laughs> <laughs> um, people were wonderful, to be honest with you. We, I thought we would get a lot more resistance about the handicapped parking. We didn't. Um, people were very appreciative of the fact, though, that we were um, coming to speak with them directly and to speak with the owners. And sometimes we toggled with a little bit of negotiation. Like, we would get each space, and we would talk to the people directly in front of it, to the right, to the left, and then go that way. And sometimes people would decide amongst themselves it should go over one or go over two. So that was actually um, something that was unanticipated, but very nice. Um, before we did it, um, these are the first original spaces that we did, and then we added. So we went through and looked at all the existing spaces, and then we went back and we looked at all the um, 27 spaces we were recommending. And I have to tell you, if you saw that chart, which you did, I'm sure, we had every single place that we spoke to, and then we did, the next slide is the, um, yeah, we looked at every curb cut, crosswalk, driveway, street, bus stop, everything, and we wrote it down for you as to why we picked what we picked. What ended up happening is there weren't that many choices once we did this, because you would end up um, either bumping into something, and I'll give you my 30-second spiel that I went to Belmont um, to bring my 90-year-old out for pizza last week, and I slid into the handicap space to let her out, and she couldn't get out of the car. There was a tree, and there was a planter. And so the business owner came out to help us, and I, it was kind of like right in that moment, I, I got it that we did as much as we did do, because you don't get it until you've done it, that this is, it's a problem for many people to kind of negotiate space. So anyway, um, the only caveat to our recommendation is that um, while we think we got it perfect, once the DPW comes on board and actually does the work, they may see something that we didn't see. So while we're telling you this is what we want to do, we want to put a little disclaimer that we think we did a perfect job, um, but we're not sure. Um, we did, as I said, spoke to about 200 businesses. It was um, really quite something. Um, and I think that's about it. I, I think, I'm not going to list all of the things that you can read it, the lamp posts and the benches and all the things that we went through. Um, the only thing I would tell you is that that was the only surprising thing for me is that we had said that we would email everybody and we put it in the newspaper. Nobody, nobody really knew. So until we actually had boots on the ground and we talked to people face to face, they really didn't know what we were doing or what the impact might be on their business. So I think... You won't, you shouldn't get any complaints about it. Let's put it that way, okay? And Darcy's next with her part. So, so we were really doing two-way education here. We were educating them about all that stuff about the criteria and what are the actual rules for handicap placards, when can you use them, what are the medical conditions, that kind of thing. But we were also getting a bunch of education back, um, some of which honestly isn't a disability commission, but they were so thrilled to have someone who was kind of from the town saying, tell us all about it. Um, or the customer in the shop would start 
talking about something. So one of the things that is kind of related, but again, not our, is parking duration, whether things are 15 minutes, two hours. That's a big issue in East Arlington, and I think someone else is going to be here um, the agenda item after ours. There was a bunch of stuff about communication, including praise for that e-newsletter that got sent out during the Mass Ave project in East Arlington. And um, we def desperately need public restrooms, which is not something I had thought about, but you should see the signs in every street. So um, the big thing about this education back and forth is we really want the Arlington Disability Commission to have a seat at the table if there's anything being discussed about parking in the future. Like there's a parking implementation and governance committee for East Arl for Arlington Center, and we currently don't have anyone on it. Mm -hmm. um, I think the idea was that Mike Rademacher was on both of those things, but he isn't actually, so we don't have any representation. We'd like it. And you know, the parking for Arlington's parks, we've been talking to Parks and Recs about that. We'd like to make sure that we have some official sort of standing because, as you can see, it's complicated and you know, people who aren't handicapped don't necessarily know about it. So, our goal here adequate number of handicapped spaces in the optimal places. We had 23 currently. The Disability Commission of Arlington advises adding 27 spots. That's 20 primary and 7 secondary. That would take us up to 50 spots in town, and that's just about 5%, so it's the minimum recommended in, um, by the Massachusetts Office of Disability. So once we put in these spots, this is what a town that is welcoming to people with disabilities looks like, and we hope that you will approve of our plan. I am impressed with the outreach effort that, that, that you undertook on this. I mean, I think that it's something we've run into before. Where we've, we have had proposals brought to us that haven't been as thoroughly vetted as we might um, like. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm quite, you know, Im, Im, impressed with that. Um, I'm going to, before we finish the discussion, I'm going to want to hear from the Director of Public Works and some of his um, feedback on it, obviously. It sounds like you've been working closely um, with him um, on that. You said that um, when you visited some of the businesses, you did engage in conversation with some of the customers as well. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Um, yeah. Well, we wore our shirts, so people started asking us all kinds of questions, and then we were going out and talking about spaces. So inevitably, People started to chat with us about it and um, talk about their handicaps. We also got an earful about a lot of things that <laughs> we would be glad to share with you at some point. We're going we're gonna to hand it off to the town manager because all the comments, we have about four pages or six pages of comments. We just wrote them anyway so people would feel heard and we said we would pass it on. Yeah. So. Thank you. Thank you. I am, yes, I am also impressed by the effort that was put into this. I, I think it is great. And I, I guess I, I was unaware of the current efficiency um, going into this, and you, you clearly, clearly brought that to light. Um, you know, we, we heard a lot about, um, you know, the positive comments. Were there any negative comments? Honestly, uh, the most positive people are hair salons <laughs> <laughs> who often said, Oh my God, you're going to put one in? That's great. Put it right there, right in front of mine. I have lots of, of customers that could use that. Um, the most sort of pushback we got was when we had to engage in an actual negotiation back and forth. And that's where we educated them about, for example, why it couldn't be in that other space that they thought was so good down the end of the they block. They wanted it to be the other guy. Yeah, you know, of course. Say, Can you go put it in front of XYZ business? And we actually would go to XYZ business sometimes and go back and forth and talk with everybody. There were a couple of places where we actually changed our minds after we heard. And I think that was the intent. I think mm -hmm. when I spoke with you all in March, I said, we don't know what we don't know. And we don't know what the impact is for folks. So there were people that said, you know what, we're a takeout business. Mm -hmm. And we need people to just drive in and out in 15 minutes and there's no time limit on a handicapped space. And it would impact us tremendously. Or we have a delivery that comes every 15, 20 minutes or whatever. So we, we thought about those things. And then we would address it and ask their neighbor or their other neighbor. 
But I have to say, I had to, we talked to a lot of people. And I was shocked, because I had really anticipated that we were going to get a lot of pushback. Mm. Um, I don't know if people were just in a good mood on Saturday mornings. I have no idea. But people were open to it. But I think once you present it mm. in a way that says this is, um, it's for folks, it's for your elderly, it's for your handicapped. It's, it, it, it didn't, we didn't get the negative that we thought we would. And I also think it's because we asked. Yes, I'm, I have no doubt about that. Yeah, I think because they got, and they also, what one of the gentlemen said to me, um, I said, listen, he, he said, you know, I'm really, I'm worried about putting it in front of my place. Can we talk it through, blah, blah, blah. And I said to him, I want to assure you that we're not going to go back and say to the selectmen, this guy was a jerk, or this <laughs> one was an idiot. You know, we're, this is between us. And he actually thanked me for that and said, well, that makes it easier for me to have this conversation about whether or not it's good or bad for me. Mm. So I think we, we tried to do it as sensitively as we could for folks so that they would feel like the town was embracing this with them. So I don't know if that. Thank you. And they could have known things that we didn't know about that particular neighborhood or um, the DPW knew things that we didn't know about right. something going on in that area. So in both cases, there was education back and forth. And we would say, uh, yep, there are meters coming to Arlington Center. <laughs> got that we got that question a lot, actually. That was one of the big ones. Thank you. Can, can you tell me uh, the secondary space? What's the secondary? The, what, you, you gave a distinction yeah. there that I didn't know what it was. Honestly, because we weren't sure that you would say yes to them all, we actually prioritized them and we tried to, I mean, some of those secondary spaces were specifically asked for by the store. They said, could you please put one here then? Um, so they're secondary only in the sense of if you're only going to allow us 20, which would put us way too far under the 5% um, from the Massachusetts Office of Disability. But if we only got the 20, we would take that 20 first. Okay. There's another sort of primary and secondary that goes with uh, some of them are easier than others, which you know Mike could speak to. Some of them are going to require a little more work or removing a bike rack and putting it you know, two feet down, that kind of thing. But some of them are just a matter of some blue paint and a sign. OK. So. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'd like to ha hear, Adam, either from you or Mike about your thoughts on the process and the other thing is that I'm just not is the intent for tonight the so uh, to actually vote approval of these spaces or is is that the so I don't know if and whoever it is has to go to a microphone <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> that's what we would like to, but I think they're asking so my suggestion would be uh, even even um, understanding the amazing outreach that you did, that the board um, allow us to do, you know, an, an email blast, uh, get it out to the media for, for businesses and residents to look at the map that's um, been produced. Give you a list of just so you know, yeah, and yeah. Every comment, I mean, every single owner. I'm not trying to argue. Yeah. Yeah. Every business owner has. Yeah. So my concern is, and, and I want to be very clear, this is no criticism of the work at all, that approving it tonight would almost guarantee there will be people back here yelling at the board okay. a month from now, if not given a more wide open opportunity to provide comment on it. That, that, that's my advice to the board. And I don't think it needs to be a major delay, but maybe even providing just a okay. two week period for public feedback before the August meeting, and then considering or so contemplating a formal action. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll let him go roll just for a minute more. No, and that, and that, 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 nothing more to say. Okay. Mike, did you have anything you want to weigh in? Or are you all set? Um, I do want to uh, commend these folks for the work they did when they first brought this uh, item up at the Disability Commission. I thought we are going to be in serious trouble. DPW putting signs up in front of everyone's business and people coming out and uh, harassing us. And, but to their credit, they did quite a bit of legwork. And, um, and should be commended. I think that um, I would suggest that if we move forward with this, that uh, we would start with just signage. Uh, the, uh, the paint on the street is not required for it to be a legal spot, and it would be a, a quite a bit more work to put signage and paint. So uh, I would suggest if when we do decide to move forward, if we do, that we would um, start with the signage and then potentially paint later, or maybe not. It's a lot of maintenance and upkeep to paint the space, and, and, a, and a sign alone 
warrants a handicap spot. Okay. Joe? And presumably, you know, the scope, a project of the scope, there'd be a, a phased rollout of it. So I, I think maybe, you know, if we're going to go out and, and solicit some public input, maybe when the board does take it up for, for final approval, it might be helpful just to understand what a rollout like that would, would realistically look like. We do that, or do we? No, no. I, I think no, we, we need that for we, professional we, we staff. Yeah. What, what the rollout would. We did give each of those 200 plus places a map of their neighborhood and what was going to happen. Yep. A very clear map. So. Oh, I'm talking about a timeline. Just a t kind of a timeline. Right. Yeah, that's everything we did. The email blast stuff. Were done by Ted Fields in March. Um, but I, I, I yeah. totally agree. If you want to, you know, I. So, do, uh, could I hear a motion then to ask uh, the town manager to follow up with the communication and further feedback on this plan? So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? I'm just asking a clarification. Yeah. Sure. So, are you. When you do the email blast, is that for the residents? Is that what you're so thinking? So, Kwani, come on over to the mic, just because oh. no one can hear you. Are you? Uh, so we, um, in general, the like, it, it's just that. Uh, so, I, the answer it's not for any one specific group. It's for anyone. Like, so it could be somebody. It could be a, a, somebody who lives there. It could be a business who wasn't there at the particular time. It could be a customer. Um, in in our process, in the things that we do. Over communicating is by far more successful than what the, than than actually than like just right. doing uh, uh, um, the like essentially the minimum. Yep. And so uh, I think that really basically what you're hearing I think from this group when uh, who's talking is saying we, we like it we okay. but uh, to make it a more successful project more communication is warranted. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I wish we had known that ahead of time. We would have sure. done it. You know, yeah. we would have yeah. worked with you, but that's things, okay. But there are some things that you that um, you expect to heat come from a very specific source. Yeah. And you're, you know, frankly, not the source. So you like, yeah. you know, you're not the, you know, the, the group doing it. Uh, Steve, I'm sorry. Um, no, I agree with you that I think coming from the town manager's office is uh, appropriate for that outreach. Um, and uh, I do, and um, well, I'm not trying to take away from the project at all. I would like, you know, you talked about maybe moving some, you know, some of the engineering parts around, and I think that it's important that we have um, DPW look into those changes uh, before any spots are made. And, he did. Oh, great. But I, I mean, I, I don't see any of that in there, so I would like to see um, okay. kind of those changes as well. And um, yeah, and I'm looking forward to moving, uh, moving this along. So okay. Is there anyone else here who would? come to talk about this particular issue? All right. I just had yeah, a please. clarity question. Yep. Um, when you say you're going to do an email blast, where did you get those email addresses from? Because I didn't even, so just so we are, the motion that we're making, just so you know, to be clear, isn't send an email. The motion we're making is hand it to the town manager and let him, in his infinite wisdom, do a whole bunch of, of, of outreach. So, Adam, okay. do you want to clarify at all? About the, That's okay. Yeah. So all I, right. can, I, can, I, mean, I can answer the Please. question. So yeah. the, um, the town has uh, an email that the town notices subscriber list that has over 5,000 subscribers uh -huh. uh, that we would send it out to. We may even send it to that Mass Ave project subscriber list that you mentioned in, in your remarks, given that, that those are people interested at least in the East Arlington portion of Mass Ave. I'd probably then send it to these newly formed Support Arlington Center uh, group, the Support Arlington Heights group, just to make sure that people that are active and engaged but probably today have no idea that we're even talking about this, mm -hmm. at least have an opportunity to feel like hey, this looks great, or maybe there's a suggestion, as opposed to having all this great work that you've done, be welcomed right. three weeks from now with criticisms and, and questions of why didn't we hear about this. Okay, and do, do you want us to, do we come back next month? Is that what, okay. Uh, whenever, when, so when uh, Adam reached, thinks, has gotten through the feedback cycle that he's happy with, he will ask Marie through the chair, who's Diane, to put it back on the agenda. And then it'd be very appropriate for you to come when it comes back, okay. On, okay. which could be as early as our next meeting in August. But you know, if it turns out that there's something happens and it gets moved a little bit in September because we're still, you know, things like that are not unusual. Okay, okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Robert Coon, 110 Thorndale. Uh, could you vote to approve the report that's just been given to you? 
we wouldn't vote to approve except, it. Sorry, except, <laughs> yeah, except, the, uh, except the rule. Except uh, and refer to tab. To the, I think that. Um, oh, who made the motion? Um, I made that oh, first motion, so um, I'll amend that motion by adding on. We um, we are static about the work that's been shown to us tonight, and um, we do accept the report, and we will make changes subject to what we hear from the town manager. Okay. I appreciate it. Yep. Okay. All right. I'll second that as worded. Further discussion? No. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can turn that one off. Thank you. Thank you. Fucking uh, blue man group, man. There you go. Thank you very much. All right. Next up is bus stop relocation and. Peter Barritos of the Arlington Diner. Hello. Hi, uh, my name is actually Nicholas Barretos. Uh, so, yeah. I uh, said welcome, go okay. for it. Yeah. So uh, I just want to start off by thanking you for the time that you've given me to uh, present for my, my family. My father's in the back. And uh, so the Arlington Diner is located on 134 Mass Ave. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but about last year there was a uh, a movement of the bus stop which was located in front of the Za restaurant and uh, this year it has been moved to uh, in front of our restaurant which we previously had two parking spots which were both two hour spots and uh, I just wanted you guys to keep in mind that a lot of our customers are elderly uh, elderly customers and some of them are children as well and some are handicapped and uh, those two spots were uh, very it, it made it very accessible for the for those group of people to enter our store. And uh, I'm not sure if you've been given the signatures that I've also gotten, which are about three to 400 signatures of citizens of Arlington, Massachusetts. Uh, so, I mean, what an another thing that has uh, ar arisen from this problem was the fact that across the street, it's also 15 minute parking. And uh, right next to it, it's 30 minute parking which leaves our customers left with not much of uh, availability for them to get to our store with an easy access. Um, so what I came here today was to ask not only for the bus stop to be moved further down the street, for us to also gain back the two spots, but for you guys to reconsider uh, the timing limit on the spots across the street, which are 15 and 30 minutes, because uh, a lot of our customers don't you know, run in the, the restaurant that fast to eat. So. <laughs> It makes it a little bit difficult to uh, accommodate our customers, and we've gotten a lot of complaints. Uh, a lot of them are curious on why it got moved in front of our uh, our restaurant. But uh, I also wanted to state that I'm not only here representing my father and the restaurant, but representing the customers that have been, you know, loyal to us for many, many years. As I think I stated, we've owned the restaurant for 13 years. I've been involved since I was a kid, so. Uh, you know, it's a little bit, it hurts a little bit to see, you know, the, the unhappiness of the customers from the spots being taken away. So I just wanted to bring that up. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm assuming there's a history <laughs> about how the, the history of this bus station is that. Accurate? Yeah, so my, um, my understanding was this is a, a well vetted, well discussed portion of the Mass Ave redesign. And um, in my Early time, I think back as deputy town manager, I even remember there being a meeting at the Arlington Diner looking uh, and reviewing plans for the Mass Ave corridor project. Um, I think that the simple answer to the question um, uh, that he asked of why was it moved, uh, it, in most design, it is safer, easier, and better for traffic to have a bus go across an intersection and pull in so it can fully get out of the roadway as opposed to turn its way in and, and still have its back end out and blocking traffic. So that's sort of the engineering reason why a lot of time you see bus stops sometimes moved from the front end of, of a cross street to the back end of a cross street. Uh, as, aside from that, um, I, I don't know if there's much more of a backstory okay. than that. Do we know about the spots across the street? Uh, do, are there takeout? So there's, I know there's a 15, one 15-minute 15 spot in front of the liquor store. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not immediately familiar where the 30-minute spots are. Uh, yeah, so there's two, uh, right where the liquor store is, I believe those are two 30-minute spots. And right where the pharmacy used to be, there's also two 15-minute spots. Uh, and previously, I think those were also, I think, an hour or two-hour spots uh, 
previous years back. So uh, not only is my question uh, why, why the, sp the bus stop got moved like that, but you know, why are those spots not, you know, larger time frame, you know? So one option that we could have is that we could refer to our parking subcommittee. Um, I don't know, or does park, or do... I, I think um, I'd, I'd be comfortable referring it to Corey Ruto. Um, I think that in past with, because he, he did the study up in Downing Square, I remember yeah. when we changed, when we looked at those hours for, um, does that sound appropriate? Yeah, and I think, you know, so I, I was by on, on Sunday morning in anticipation of this, and I, it struck me immediately that the hours that the short time frame would benefit the uh, businesses adjacent to you are different than exactly. your time. So I think the consideration that Corey could maybe give us some recommendations for some varied timing. So maybe it would be 15 minutes in the e afternoons and evenings, but two hours in the morning or whatever, however it would work. However it would be accommodated. Uh, though that seems a little complicated, it might be sort of a, a way to achieve at least that part of the uh, sure. question. And, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry about that. But it also sounds like there's a potential that there is a, a short time limit in front of a business based on a previous use. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, is, it, is it in front of Meta Pharmacy? Uh, yes, it was. In, the 15 minutes was in front of the pharmacy. Yeah, I don't think, yeah. I don't I think that's a regular retail pharmacy eliminated. anymore. If I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so uh, I guess I'll make the motion that we'll send the parking issues to Officer Ato for his commentary, and we'll address it at a later date. Um, I'm not quite sure where I'm at with the bus stop. Um, I think there was, you know, quite a lot of work that. Uh, went into the whole Mass Ave project, and I think there were, you know, this was, it, it was a calculated decision. Um, and looking at that part of Mass Ave, I don't know where else it could move to. Um, you move it further down, but there's another, um, you know, there's a bus stop not that far off there, so I, I don't know if it would turn into eliminating it. Um, would, the, would the planning department be inappropriate? Um, team to kind of consider this a little bit further or? Of whether or not they'd be an allowable. Uh, yeah. I mean, we, we certainly can. I'm happy to make that motion too. Okay. Okay, I'll second it. All right. Um, so I def uh, well, I, it's definitely worth looking into. Um, I, I will say that it, 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 I won't be totally surprised. The parking does seem um, more Something that's something that's more flexible. The, the the bus, I will be surprised because it is one of those things that a lot of people looked at. And we tried to do it. And it's a, a part as I as I've said before. When I ran for office, I knew a lot about what I was getting into. Um, but the thing that I didn't expect was what fraction of the time I was going to talk about parking, uh, because it is the thing that. Uh, um, yeah, it, it, because it's just, it's one of our very scarce resources in exactly. town, uh, in particular the, the free public parking. Yeah. All right. So um, the answer is you're not going to get an answer tonight, but we're sending two parts of your question to two different groups to okay. or, to, to look at. All right. And uh, will I get an email or a letter stating when the next time or the next meeting would be? Yeah. We will be in touch on that. Marie will do that. Okay. Okay. Are you good. Awesome. All right. So I've got a motion uh, by. Um, Mr. Burns, second by Mr. Kiro. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Our right, let's the housing production. We're starting with Adam or Jenny? We'll go ahead for Jenny. Jenny. Uh, sure, you can introduce. All right. I'll introduce you. No. Oops. All right. So, my, I think that little thing was. Not at all. What? Yeah, I think, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I'll pull away from the desk. Uh, <laughs> I think it was actually sitting on the white cable, believe it or not. Yeah. Better? Yeah. 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 So good evening. I'm Jennifer Raid. I'm the Director of Planning and Community Development. I'm just going to quickly um, make some introductions and um, tell you we're here tonight to talk about the Arlington Housing Production Plan. It's actually uh, the conclusion of a 10-month effort that started with uh, my predecessor, Carol Kowalski, and Laura Wiener, uh, our assistant planning director and director of housing, to put out an RFP looking for a consultant to do the housing production plan. And this was actually out of the master plan's number one recommendation in about housing was to create a plan for affordable housing. So we're acting upon that first recommendation of the, of the master plan and creating essentially housing policy for the town 
uh, for the next five years. That's the goal of the housing production plan. So I'm, I'm not going to talk in detail about the housing production plan. That's what actually Karina Milchman from Metropolitan Area Planning Council is going to do. But I want to first thank the MAPC, um, Karina, as well as others from MAPC who helped with the plan. Um, and their work tonight uh, is going to be explained and discussed. You'll have time to ask questions. Um, and also J.M. Goldson, you can see the logo on the screen. Jennifer Goldson helped us with all of our community outreach portion of the plan and also helped Karina with the, the sort of finalization of the work. Um, I also want to really thank Laura Weiner for all of her effort in, within the, my department, putting, pulling the whole thing together, also pulling together the Housing Plan Advisory Committee. We have, I think, um, this evening Pam Hallett and maybe she'll make some comments after uh, Karina's presentation. And I want to just list uh, the people who served on the Housing Plan Advisory Committee really briefly. So we had Lori August from the Council on Aging, Pamela Baldwin, who's a community resident, Andrew Bennell from the ARB, Kate Casa, a community resident, John Griffin, the Executive Director of the Arlington Housing Authority, Pam Hallett from the Housing Corporation of Arlington, Laura Kiesel, who's also a resident, Dan McHugh, resident, and Wendy Barr, community resident. So um, that group actually met, I think, since November, October, November, and has been in the process of meeting ever since, helping us with the plan development, helping to uh, design the, and review the work out of the community forums, and ultimately help to uh, refine the product that you're going to see tonight. So I'm happy to answer any other questions about the plan once Karina's done her presentation, but I'd like to welcome Karina Milchman from MAPC. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, thank you for having me. Um, would it be possible to scooch this a little yeah, closer to that? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Just to keep a track of where your cable is and... All right. I think, I think we're safe. So hi, everyone. Thank you for um, taking the time to review the plan, as I understand you've done in advance of tonight. And I'm going to take you through the plan components really briefly with a focus on the goals and the strategies that um, sort of rose to the top through our public planning process and which we further refined um, in the plan. So um, I think I'm just going to take you through really briefly the planning process, which Jenny mostly laid out. But I'll make sure to cover the bold points, uh, the plan components, as I said. The focus mostly will be on strategies tonight, just to make sure everyone has a strong understanding of the policy guidelines being proposed for the next five years for housing in Arlington. And then I'll briefly cover next steps. So this is um, a little graphic of the project timeline. Um, you can see we started in October, actually, with the first advisory committee meeting. Um, the work, I should mention, was funded through MAPC via direct local technical assistance and also PATH funding, planning assistance towards housing from DHCD. Um, as Jenny mentioned, the planning process was guided by a very active planning um, advisory committee. We had two public forums, both of which were quite well attended, and I would um, note that many people who turned out for the first one came again to the second one, which was great to have that kind of consistency throughout. Um, we also had a focus group which had local um, developers participating and um, landowners and others who had a strong understanding of um, the real estate community, uh, development community and landscape in Arlington. Um, so the plan includes a comprehensive housing needs and demand analysis which has a lot of quantitative data um, analysis in it. It also has an assessment of sort of um, development constraints in Arlington as well as capacity. So what kind of resources are there? What kind of development opportunities are there? And the plan includes a map that highlights some of the development opportunities that were discussed during the planning process and where there was some consensus around seeing housing production or redevelopment. Um, and then it has the housing goals and strategies and implementation plan. So we're going to focus on um, the goals and strategies. These are the goals. Through the planning process, um, a couple of key housing priorities rose to the top, and that was to update Arlington's housing stock to address need and meet demand, to um, increase the housing inventory to address the low vacancy rate, the growing number of households in Arlington, and the associated increased demand diversify the housing stock um, to meet the needs of an aging population, a range of household types, 
and shrinking household size in Arlington, and then to have housing at multiple price points for low-income households and cost-burden households with a range of incomes. Because one of the key findings was that there were cost-burden households, meaning they pay 30% or more of their annual household income on housing um, at all income levels. So not just low-income, not just moderate, but also middle-income households in Arlington. So out, out of these um, goals, run through really quickly. One is sort of general affordability to update the existing housing and produce more diverse housing for a range of incomes. There are two goals that have to do with location, where to focus on housing production and redevelopment. One, to encourage mixed income housing and mixed use development in the business districts. And the other, to integrate affordable units in a range of housing types in Arlington's existing neighborhoods. And that would be more through redevelopment of underutilized properties and reuse of existing buildings. So not so much changing the character of those neighborhoods, but just the use within existing properties. And then there's a goal that focuses on the senior population in Arlington to foster an aging supportive community via housing choices that enable older adults to thrive in town as they age. There are several strategies um, to achieve the zoning goal, which is to ensure that the bylaw allows flexible approaches to achieve housing affordability and livability. And then finally, a capacity-related goal to increase the capacity of the town to facilitate housing production by allocating funding, staff, and other resources to relevant activities, and also by educating the community and making sure that they're kept aware of the need and demand for housing in Arlington and the activities that are going on to meet up. So the strategies are really divided into three separate categories in the plan, and the first is zoning. Um, and so these are, this is sort of bold headlines for the zoning strategies. Um, there's a strategy to uh, allow zoning for a range of household types, including accessory dwelling units and cluster development, as an example. Um, to amend the dimensional regulations to better facilitate multifamily and mixed-use development, to amend inclusionary zoning to pr possibly produce units at a wider range of income, so not just for low income, um, and possibly to reconsider sort of the incentives, density bonus and whatnot in your inclusionary provisions, to consider an overlay district to allow residential development in select light industrial and commercial areas to create mixed use and mixed income development, to create an af um, affordable family housing through new construction or conversion of existing two to three bedroom market rate housing, to follow through on the parking amendments that um, were just approved at town meeting recently in the spring, and then to determine what type of supportive housing would be most useful in town um, and to take steps to facilitate its development through the zoning. And then, the other categories are both under local initiatives. So the first is um, a range of programs, um, programs to preserve the long-term affordability of existing units, particularly at Millbrook Square, which um, has a number of uh, un affordable units that are at risk for expiring in the near future, um, to expand and promote existing housing assistance programs in town that support income-eligible homeowners specifically and to maximize resources and services that enable seniors to continue living in the community and to coordinate with other non-housing services in Arlington to support aging in the community. And then finally, to explore mechanisms to facilitate creation of affordable home ownership, like a community land trust was one of the um, ideas to consider under the action items. And then lastly, strategies regarding um, resources and capacities in town. And those range from working with the Community Preservation Committee to encourage continued allegation of greater than the state mandated minimum 10% of annual CPA funds towards housing initiatives, to establish a municipal affordable housing trust fund to utilize local housing funds swiftly as opportunities arise, um, to form a housing production plan implementation committee, um, and to raise community awareness about affordable housing needs, sort of building on the knowledge uh, process we started, an education process as part of this housing production plan. So those are the strategies in the plan as a nutshell, and I just want to run through the next steps really quickly. The Arlington Redevelopment Board has already adopted the plan, so now we bring it to you for adoption. Um, after you adopt it, we'll be submitting it, MAPC will be submitting it to DHCD on behalf of Arlington and it'll go through a 30-day completeness review. 
after that, they're, they have 90 days to let us know if it's approved or not. Um, sometimes there are very small edits or tweaks that DHCD will suggest, sometimes there aren't. And then you'll have an active policy guide for the next five years. So are there questions, comments that I can address? Sure. Um, thank you for the, the, um, the presentation. Um, you know, I'm struck by a, a number of um, observations and the, the, the background material that, that, that you provide. I mean, um, I, th I think where you talk about the need for different types of housing, I, I think it's something we have to really uh, remember here in town. I mean, I think we can see it anecdotally as we walk around um, walk around town, the, the, the character of different neighborhoods. Um, but also, I think, the character of our, of our community. We have a lot of, um, you know, young professionals here or maybe just starting out. Um, and you can see in some of your breakdowns the, the breakdown between um, non-household and, and um, non-family and, and uh, family households. Um, I, I think it skewed slightly towards the, the family households, but it wasn't, it wasn't radically uh, so, which kind of uh, uh, calls out the need for that diversity. Mm -hmm. Also, it, it jumped out here. Um, the we're going to have an aging population here, and obviously, as folks age, they they have a different housing need than than um, than younger folks. At the same time, that we know that we're we're struggling with um, the need for family housing as as well. Um, um, it seems like it's there. We have a bit of a mismatch going on, and we have a big demand to live in this this, this community. Um, I like what you have here as a strategy. Obviously, town meeting has has acted actually already on some of this, and we've discussed a lot of this ad nauseum in the I don't want to say ad nauseum, but in the master planning. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't make me sick. <laughs> In the, in the uh, at great length, let's say, in the uh, master planning um, uh, process, uh, we, 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 um, we talked a lot about the need for this, and that's why, for example, town meeting took action on, on uh, the mixed-use um, housing, to, both to spur commercial development, which is a, a great, uh, you know, great discussion that we have going on right now, and um, to spur the ability to, to um, meet some of our our housing to need, uh, need. I mean, I think we forget that Arlington was such a larger uh, um, town, you know, up until about 1970 or so. Um, we were sig significantly larger, I think well over uh, 50,000. I think we might have even been pushing up against the 60,000 um, um, in, in our population. Um, so, uh, you know things change as we go as we go on, and I think it's important for us to to take a look at some of these uh, strategies like overlay districts that, that you have um, um, in the plan. The other thing I would also note it just it, it really jumped out at me is that over half of our housing stock was built before 1939, and I know that as we talk about our public facilities and, and the need to keep them up and and have energy efficient facilities that that that. That's something that would raise eyebrows with us, I think, with a lot of our facilities. And, and you think about housing and the cost of, of keeping that up, um, that's also something. So I, those are just a few things that I pulled out. This is a huge report and, and a huge amount of work. And I was glad to be able to attend your first, your first session. Um, um, I know that we did get some feedback. And uh, you know, one of the pieces of feedback that I think we got had to do with um, our safe haven provisions in uh, 40B. Um, and you talk about a strategy um, to try to hit the safe haven based on the rate of growth of, of uh, affordable units within the town, which seems a, like an ambitious goal it's for us. And I was wondering if you could, you could talk about how, how realistic that is. Yeah, I think that the pro <clears throat> production of housing units at either 0.5% or 1% of your total overall stock annually is certainly aspirational and ambitious. Um, I think it's a good goal to set, and I know that DHCD likes to see that, requires that in order to approve the plan. Um, but you are certainly not beholden to produce 100 or so units a year um, just because it's in that plan. It is an ambition and an aspiration. Sure, sure. 
and, and as I think everyone knows, we've been asserting safe haven through other, other means as well to try to protect the rights of, of the town. And the other question that I have is um, you, you've identified within the plan, um, you know, a number of potential um, uh, parcels that, that might be right for, for um, residential mm -hmm. development. Um, you know, could you speak a little bit? Most of them are, are commercial sites right now. Could you speak a little bit about how how um, we pursue those? I mean, I think we we did go with the uh, mixed use um, zoning as as one approach at town meeting this year. Because you talk about how, a little bit about how they were chosen and how we pursue those while also maintaining the town's commercial base. Sure. Well, discussion of um, development opportunities began with the town and with the advisory committee. And we had a, actually a much larger list of sites to consider that we brought to the first, I believe, the first public forum um, for initial feedback. And at the second public forum, we did further refining with the public. And we narrowed it down to the, I think, 12 sites that are now, um, now noted in the plan. Um, we did site visits um, and we spoke in some cases with property owners, um, current property owners. Um, I think some there has been discussion of some of the commercial sites about um, relocating the business within the site if, if there were to be mixed use development, for example, so not, not to have to displace any businesses. Um, so I think that's, that's sort of how the sites were identified and, mm -hmm. Almost all of the sites are in the master plan. They were identified yeah. in the master planning process. The only exception are the sites on Broadway, which are sort of the low one-story commercial. And Broadway was identified, but those specific properties were not. And, and those are sort of meant to be examples, because there are a lot of properties like that. But um, most of the major sites were identified in the master planning process. Right. That, that's that's some, of my, some of my questions. I might have some more. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so one, I'm very happy to move approval of this document. Um, thank you very much for all your work on it. Um, um, it was a really impressive team of volunteers who were, you know, quite dedicated. This was an extensive project, um, and I think it's a really important document moving forward as we set strategies for, um, you know, what the future of our community is going to look like. Um, I, it's important to note, I think, in some of the correspondence Joe mentioned that um, we heard that this actually was not aligned with the master plan, but it, it was directly aligned with it and it came out of it. And I think, it, like we heard earlier um, from one of the speakers, that we can't lose sight of the master plan. And this is, you know, actually putting our, our feet to the ground and um, making sure all of that good work is being followed through on. Um, so yeah, I think it's great, and I'm uh, looking forward to continue working on it. So thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, oh, can I say please. one more yeah. thing? Um, and I, we did hear that um, this project was funded via uh, DL district local technical assistance. Um, the governor actually vetoed all district local technical assistance for the next fiscal year. So um, I think it's important that we contact representatives and ask them to uh, override that veto. Thank you. I had not heard that. Mm. Um, I definitely, so I, I, I like the plan. Um, I'll say that one of the things that i so the, the parts of it that I really like are think, talking about um, the fact that I think that we need to revisit some of the zoning changes, particularly around, um, like, so like the progress we made on mixed use is great. I still, and some of the opponents, uh, that you know have sent us correspondence about this have said things like but you're you're, you're going to talk about accessory apartments again and I'm like yes we are going to talk about accessory apartments again <laughs> and I look forward to the discussion and I look forward to persuading town meeting that uh, it is that there is a path with accessory apartments that makes sense for Arlington uh, so the, the, you know there are parts of the, the like I, I think that um, some of the opposition I've heard about this is um, wishful thinking. It's you know, it's wishing that the, if we you know we if we do nothing or if we like don't never let another building happen in Arlington, that everything will be fine. And uh, I do not believe that that is. I, I think that is completely, um, you know, it it is it is wishful, but it is it doesn't have anything to do with reality. Um, there are parts of it that I'm a little bit. I wish we could the aspirational parts. I wish that the language was a little bit more aspirational, um, but. Uh, 
it, you know, th I'm voting, uh, uh, when we take it as a whole, and I, I'm, I'm ready to, uh, to support it. So I've got a motion. I don't think I had. Yeah, second. Uh, so I apologize. Second. Second. Um, is there anyone else who's here to talk about this particular item? Ms. Health. Hi, I'm Pam Hallett, Executive Director of the Housing Corporation of Arlington. Um, I just want to say that we fully support this plan. We think it's a great model, uh, something to sort of pay attention to over time and direct our work um, along with the planning department and all the volunteers that took place, uh, to, that worked on this, to uh, actually get some of this accomplished. I think it's a great tool. Um, and we're looking forward to uh, seeing some of these come to fruition. Sure. That's all. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Steve Revelac, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Uh, I also like this plan a lot, uh, particular, particularly in the way that it focuses on provide on. It's concerned about providing housing that's affordable to different levels of income. Um, while we were discussing zoning ad nauseum during town meeting, <laughs> um, one of the, one issue that came up several times was uh, housing around Arlington is getting more expensive. Um, dare I say the G word, gentrification? But I think there's a lot of things in this plan that will help um, you know keep the, the housing stock diverse and affordable to a larger number of people. Um, I'm also glad to see it mentioned in accessory dwellings, and I hope to see a, a tiny house in Arlington at some point in the future. Thank you. Thanks. Joe? I, I just want to make one other point uh, to this, too, for anyone who might be uh, joining in on this conversation for the first time. I mean, th this is a plan. It's, it's an analysis and a snapshot of our community and some educated guesses about where we're going um, and its aspirations, its goals, and its strategies. But it's not a magic wand that the, the government, the local government, is going to be able to make all of this, this happen overnight. We, we can help try to guide some of the forces. To an extent, we're going to be at the, the you know, great extent, we're going to be at the sway of the demand that just, that's just out there, demographic changes and economic demands for, for people, for housing here in our community. And we're going to rely, have to rely on, um, not have to rely on, we happily rely on uh, our partnerships with the nonprofit sector and, and, and uh, HCA who fill important gaps. So I think it's important that we kind of set all of this and, and accept this within that, that, that framework and that context as we go forward for anyone who might be tuning in for the first time. Right. <clears throat> Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, Thank approved. You. Thank you very much. Just, just yes, please. I, the, I move that the plan is adopted. <laughs> all right. Second. <laughs> Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right. We are next. Uh, did we make it to correspondence? Am I right or did I miss it? No, we're at uh, community CCA choice. And, uh, I lost my, um, yeah. yeah. Thank you. CCA. Oh yeah, I missed two items. Mm. CCA, who's talking, I have, uh, who's Adam. Adam, are you up on this one? I am, so I'm sorry. No, it's not your, I'm, I managed to move my agenda off my uh, screen, which is not, <laughs> which is not as, uh, the best move I've ever made. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So under this article tonight, uh, the board will be asked to formally approve the actual aggregation plan for the community choice aggregation uh, that was approved to go forward at town meeting. So at the board's, I believe it was the board's last meeting, the board voted to open up a public comment period, uh, which ran for three weeks and actually closed last Wednesday. Uh, we, and during that three week comment period, we held uh, a public information forum um, uh, to give residents an opportunity to learn a little bit more about the aggregation and provide feedback, as well as making uh, the town manager email address available for people to send in written comments. I've provided the written comment that was received by, uh, by July 12th as part of this agenda item. There were four uh, different residents who did uh, email. Those who asked questions, I tried to respond to. Those who made more observations, thank them for providing their observations. 
Uh, we also have tonight from Good Energy, uh, the aggregator, we have uh, Philip Carr here to answer any questions that you might have mm. about the plan or maybe about uh, the emails or feedback that was provided. Um, otherwise, I, I think the biggest question that I will address before turning it over to the, um, the board for questions is the question of whether or not we actually wanted to waive the quarterly uh, disclosure provision. Um, so that was raised by, I believe, Selectman Kira at the last meeting, uh, as well as being raised in an email from, um, from, from one of the residents who wrote in. Uh, and in discussions uh, with Philip, uh, as well as his attorney from Good Energy, uh, it's my understanding that that provision has actually been waived in ag every aggregation that has been done to date. And, and it's really just that the expense of a quarterly mailing uh, to disclose information that could otherwise be made available on the town website. Um, it is a cumbersome and potentially unnecessary requirement and that DPU would actually be surprised if the waiver wasn't being requested. Um, given that there is a mailing that goes out in terms of the opt-out period that gives people an, you know, sort of a paper notice of what's mm -hmm. happening and their ability to opt out, I certainly feel comfortable that duplicating or having on an ongoing basis a quarterly disclosure wouldn't be necessary, but certainly that's up to the board if they want to re recommend making a change to the plan. Uh, outside of that, there's no other particular matters that I, I wanted to point out. Um, but again, if the board has any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. Joe. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I did raise that. I mean, I would, you know, leave it to your good offices to find effective ways to communicate. I think I had suggested potentially uh, a notice in the, in the water bills, assuming that everybody who has water has electricity as well. Um, but I, I understand that that's, that's valuable real estate, um, too. Um, so I'd leave it to your good offices. I, I, I understand that if, if it has been the practice to waive it, I don't think we want to. The goal of this was not to drive up costs, for sure. Um, I, I did want to ask, uh, one of the residents who wrote in did have some questions about um, an exit fee. And I wonder... Yeah, so I, I had been... in error that there would be an opt-out fee after the end of the opt-out period. Uh, but uh, the aggregation plan is clear that there is n never an opt-out fee, and I actually confirmed that with Philip today, that there is, whether, you, whether you're in the opt-out period or you're two days away from the end of the aggregation, there's no opt-out fee. Okay. And I, I let that resident know that as well. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Um, yeah. Yeah, Joe. Um, I guess my, my question would be with the actual comments. Now, we they're sent along with the package. Are they then taken into are they taken into any further account, or you know, will I'm there gonna, be any action for them? I'm going to ask Philip to answer that if you don't. Great. If the board doesn't mind. Right, good evening, everybody. Hey, Phil. Um, sorry, what was your question again? Um, so with, with the we had the you know three week comment period. What type of action, if any, will be taken on these comments as we continue to move through the process? Could you also introduce yourself again? Sorry, yes, uh, Philip Carr, um, New England Regional Manager for Good Energy. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, a uh, good question. Uh, the we will try to address uh, any questions that come up directly, because mm -hmm. uh, as part of our outreach program, we want, we want everybody with um, good and sensible questions to have, have a response. Mm -hmm. so, so the prime goal is to address the questions mm -hmm. so people are satisfied. Um, and secondarily, to demonstrate to the Department of Public Utilities that we've had a comprehensive and thorough review period. So, so these comments are important, whether positive or negative, um, to show that it wasn't just like window dressing. This actually was a real live process. And, yeah, and that real discussion was had, which is important. So thank you. Okay. Good. Uh, is there anyone who's here to talk about this one? Is there a motion? I move to approve. Second. Is there any other language that we're looking for? Right. Is there a formal vote or a motion to approve the aggregation plan? Yes, you have a motion to approve. Yes, sir. Okay. Any Let's further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Three zero. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Okay, thanks, sir. Nice. Okay, thank you. All right, Homeless Study Commission. This one, Doug? It is. Yes, thank you, Mr. Dunn. Um, so as the board will recall, uh, in the 2016 town meeting cycle, there was a proposal that was forwarded by the town to uh, address 
overnight camping in Arlington, received a tremendous amount of very uh, insightful and valuable feedback about why we might not have the information necessary to make the types of proposals that we were making. And this board voted uh, ultimately to uh, support a no action on the proposal that was before it and to establish a task force to study the issue of a, with a special focus on um, the uh, unsheltered or uh, otherwise referred to as homeless in Arlington and how we might uh, better understand the resources that are available to them, the challenges that are facing them, and as well as, of course, the challenges that are facing the community to try to develop some proposals or ideas that would balance uh, some public health, community safety concerns, uh, along with the um, interests that this town has always had in uh, helping and supporting its homeless population. So we've had a lot of conversations with uh, the police department, with the planning department, the town manager's office. Uh, you'll recall that members of the Human Rights Commission were uh, instrumental in providing some initial feedback on this. And now we're just coming back to uh, the selectmen to create the actual task force with the recommendation that it be nine members. Uh, with some of those members being appointed uh, by the uh, relative relevant town departments and commissions, and two of those members being appointed directly by the board. One of those should be a representative of Precinct 1, which is, uh, I think, disproportionately impacted by uh, some of the issues that have been discussed both at previous meetings and, and, and here. Thank you. Who's up first? Um, yeah, so I will, um, so I'll move to form the committee. Is the From the task force. For, sure. From the task force. Um, and when I, I'm happy that this is back in front of us. Um, you know, I, I think that when we first had this discussion, there, there was a concern that there would be a lack of compassion in, in you know, dealing with this issue. And um, I, I think that this committee or this task force will be important in ensuring that you know everyone is treated respectfully um, and with dignity and we um, and will reach an outcome that will be in the best interest of everyone's safety and I think that's important so thank you so I, I, I support the proposal as it's placed before us I think the only th the mechanical thing that I, that I would ask is um, and I, I'm not sure we can answer this without the, the chair being present is I, I note that, you know, two of the members would be appointed by the board and it seems like whenever we have direct board appointees, we're kind of a reinventing the process each time we go. Um, and uh, was there a thought that, that it was best vested directly with the board as opposed to a town manager appointment with, with our assent? I don't know if the town manager has a perspective on that. I, I think that uh, obviously this was born out of a Warren article uh, discussion that may have been part of what uh, uh, formatted the yeah. idea, but um, I, I don't know that there's any structural reason why we can't have them be uh, town manager appointees with the approval of the board. We, yeah. we also could do, um, like, uh, the chair does interviews and then it makes recommendations to the full board, sure. which is what we do with the zoning uh, review committee right. in, the, in the past. The ZBA, so yeah. I, I'm I mean, I'm, I'm indifferent. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not sure where to go on that. With, I, I, maybe we should just adopt it as is. Uh, and if yep. the chair, yep. the, the chair can either do it or designate someone to. They'll have that leeway to yeah. ask Adam to step in. I think that's important too. So, one mechanical thing. I often when we create these things, I like having a sunset in them. Uh, did you think about that at all or no? So we did think about the idea that the ideal timeline would be for folks to make recommendations. I'll have to admit that this got back to in front of the board a little more slowly than I would have ideally liked. So having a sunset say that you essentially will have to complete your work in time for making town warrant art recommendations for the 2017 town meeting might be too short a window. Mm -hmm. um, so there was some thought given to it. Um, I wouldn't be adverse to think some language about you know, sunsetting after next year's town meeting, 2018 town meeting. Yeah. Um, I know there's some folks here who had, who had um, spoken about this when it first came up, and, and I know that we got a lot of valuable insight and input from the planning director. If anybody has any other perspectives, I think uh, some of the folks who are still here may have okay. been waiting to speak about this. Okay. 
So just as a straw man, uh, when we get up to a motion, it, um, I, would per I would be interested in hearing um, something like to uh, committee to the t task force to be dissolved upon the completion of the 2017 regular town meeting unless extended by a vote of this board. So it's like obviously we can extend, we can choose to extend it, but I like putting ends, <laughs> otherwise sure. they last forever. So yeah. Yeah. So that means they exist. Like yeah. they, 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 they trying meet, to think yeah. about when I was actually trying to think of when the that town meeting is. May. So, yeah. Yes. So hypothetically. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Someone here. Oh, sorry, Judge. Well, there's just one other piece. So yeah. we're, we, we're going to have to designate who's going to convene this. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. To whom should we? Um, we should. Do you have a? Did you, did you have a preference but going into it who your chair who the chair would be or did you want them to choose a chair um i, I think that it's probably i, I don't know if, if the planning director has specific uh, perspective on this but i think it's important that the this commission work effectively with the somerville homeless uh somerville um homeless coalition mm -hmm. so if uh the planning director has some perspective on which town and town body representative might be best suited to do that Okay, so Jennifer Raitt, Director of Planning and Community Development. Um, first of all, I'm just really supportive of this committee forming. I was very enthusiastic. I provided feedback to Doug and Adam um, as it was being drafted. I'm, you know, I think it's a great composition of people. Um, prior to recommending the creation of four other new committees, I was very enthusiastic about chairing this committee. Um, <laughs> however, I would be glad to provide support and or if needed to chair and facilitate the meeting. So I'm, I am happy to do that. I think it's a very important issue. I do think it should live with my department because of our connection to the Somerville Homeless Coalition, which is actually through Laura Wiener. Um, so I don't know if, Laura, okay. you wanted to speak to that at all, just that connection and what we do with them, because I'm not sure that that's uh, very visible work. All right. So then so. along this line, while, while Laura gets the, no, please. You would like that. You, you sure? You're welcome to speak. Yeah, but uh, I, I would say just on the chair issue, then I would recommend that what we do is we say to be chaired by the planning department or a designee. Perfect. That works for that. Laura. Okay, so for a number of years, we have had a relationship with the Somerville Homeless Coalition, which is a group of service providers mostly based in Somerville. A couple of them are based in Cambridge, and we have access to all of their services, and we have used them. And I would have to give uh, Housing Corporation of Arlington they have their homelessness prevention program. They do refer people to the Somerville Homeless Coalition. It's a, it's a HUD-mandated relationship. We, um, year, for years, we would get back feedback from HUD that what were we doing for homeless people? And we'd say, oh, well, we don't have any homeless people. But we do. They just don't stay here because we have no services. So we um, have this very successful relationship with Somerville now. and. Um, we have some permanent housing here that some, the Somerville Homeless Coalition um, funnels people to, and we get money together from HUD to fund those services. Um, so, I mean, we have, I think that the infrastructure is there to um, do what can be done to help people in Arlington who are homeless. Okay. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak on this issue? Come on up. Steve Revelak, 111 Sunnyside Avenue. Um, I think I said this back in February or March, but I really appreciate the board deciding to form a task force to study this issue. Uh, it's a sensitive issue in a lot of ways, and um, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to really. I'm glad that I'm glad that we're really making an effort to do the right thing. So thank you. Do you want to be on it? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your interest. <laughs> All right, any no. fun else? No, nope. so uh, I'll amend the motion with the changes that we discussed. So we're, so we're making it, we're putting a sunset of end of 2017, we're saying chaired by the planning, planning department, department designee. designee. And we are leaving some leeway open to allowing the chair to work with the town manager to appoint the yeah. positions. All right, so I've got a motion, Marie, are you uh, okay? I've got it too. <laughs> Second, yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Now we're at correspondence received. 
I figured out what happened, by the way, that I lost my agenda. I also managed to crash Safari, so I'm doing pretty good tonight. <laughs> So we have correspondence street parking on Acton Street from Christine Hag. We have request for naming of the ATED Visitor Center for Rolly Chapit from uh, Angel uh, Olszewski. We have municipal elections to uh, the Metropolitan Planning Organization. And we have a request for action on three traffic issues uh, from Paul Schlickman. Looks like some of these have different homes. Yes. Yeah. So I'd like to move that we, we refer the um, memorial naming uh, request to the Public Memorials Committee. Oh, second, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I completely agree. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Done. We haven't named anything else. There's no one's, we haven't had a naming in what, for a little a year or so. Yeah. yeah. We did one this spring uh, um, for, in time for the spring for uh, Bobby Mack. Yes, that's yeah. the last one I. Yep. Mm. Uh, the, and I will say this is a very appropriate yes. choice. Yeah. We're feeling his absence this year. Are yeah. we? Sure. I, I can make some suggestions for a few of them if the board Please. would like. So that for the municipal excellent. elections to the Boston MPO, if you refer that to me, that's the process we went through to get Arlington seat uh, for another year last year where we got either mayors, managers, or boards of selectmen to nominate us and then run for election. So Arlington has a seat right now. This really is we're in a waiting mode to see if other communities would ask for for us to nominate them for a seat. So if you want to refer it to me, and then I can let the board know if someone is asking for a nomination. Uh, so, that was so perfect. Moved. And then for the request for uh, action on three traffic issues, engineering has already made some initial recommendations to me. So if you want to also refer that to me, we can get a recommendation back to the board for action. Okay. Excellent. Also so moved. <laughs> uh, the, the first one, I suppose we could refer to APD if, if the board so chooses. Yeah. I wonder if, um, so it, I definitely feel like we should refer to APD, but I read that one and I also say this is a classic or I don't know if there's such thing as classic, but it's like it's a neighborhood distress issue that is often resolved through direct communication. Yeah. You know, and so I wonder if there, or even if it's not resolved, can be mitigated because you know clearly we have at least we have residents who feel like they're being put upon and they and they don't feel like they're getting good communication. I wonder is if we have a good way to help facilitate that, or if, if people think that there's a different path. I'm, I'm definitely open to it. Yeah, I mean, because enforcement is one thing mm -hmm. that is, but it, you know, but they won't solve the problem. Yeah, right, they, exactly. Yeah. Hey, I know the know. director up there. Yeah. Do you? <clears throat> School. Could have a conversation, informal conversations first before we take official action. Okay. So let's refer to APD, mm -hmm. and, and we'll see what we can do on the back, on the other side of it. Yeah. yeah. And okay. see what other yeah, and see what other things we yeah. can come it, up it, with that. As you said earlier, it's a lack of resources or parking. So yeah, yeah. But even if it was, I mean, even if you just had someone like you know, like yeah. you just station someone on that street, you just have to, you know, there's things to, to do. Yeah. Hey, look, we're talking about parking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, you want to also make the motion to refer to APD. So right. two to two to uh, Adam, one to APD. Moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 New business. Marie. The only thing I want to say is that I'm here on July 26th, and I, I'm going to attend a meeting at Minutemen to discuss the voting for September 20th. Uh, it's at 1130, and I will report back as to what we have to say. But my understanding, I think Adam yeah, might agree with me that I heard today that um, they would allow us to have it at our 10 locations. But we'll talk about cost and they're gonna pick up, from what I could see today, I think they're gonna pick up most of the cost for the actual printing of the ballots, the printing and the warrant and what have you, but I'll pay the cost of, you know, the work is, that's the way I interpreted that. Is that, did you get that letter? I, I thought they paid for everything, so we, we, we can dig into that. Yeah, yeah, I thought they paid for they're, it. They're paying, they should be, state law says they pay for it all. Oh, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all, it still comes out of our bill. It's just a matter of which bill it comes out of. <laughs> Anything else, Marie? That's it. Doug. Two quick things. Uh, one, we've had an unusually busy and successful run on several litigation matters in the legal department. And I want to thank my paralegal, Peter Buckley, and attorney Ed Marlenga for their assistance in um, dismissing and resolving a number of disputes. 
Second, uh, I'd also like to note that it's also been an unusually active and interesting uh, summer with respect to a number of uh, legal reforms, including the well-publicized uh, public records laws changes, which will go into effect in January, as well as a few uh, important court decisions, which um, I'll be preparing memo and forwarding to members of the board, as well as uh, relevant department heads. Thank you. Sounds exciting. Yeah. Hmm? Sounds exciting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very exciting stuff. <laughs> um, be riveted. I spent the day in a room with a compliance officer, so I've had like <laughs> lots of it. Yeah. I'm lawyered out today. Um, I, I have two pieces of new business. One is to thank the board for the time on Saturday morning. Uh, I think we had a very, uh, very good goal setting session. Uh, I think we covered a lot of ground in a very efficient time period, and you know. I, difficult for any of us to give up a Saturday morning, so I really appreciate that and look forward to us uh, <clears throat> coming back with the revised goals and then having the board adopt them for another, another year of uh, trying to achieve our goals. Uh, the other piece of new business I wanted to let the board know is um, Donald Boudreau, longtime town employee, COA van driver, passed away. Mm -hmm. um, you may remember he recently retired from the town, so I'll, I'll be distributing details about his services, but uh, got that news earlier today. Very. Very sad to lose him. Very, very good man, dedicated employee of the town of Arlington. That's sad. Yeah. That's all I have. Um, when I, I echo uh, Adam's sentiment on our meeting Saturday. I, I think it's one of my, I, I really enjoy that meeting every year, and I, I look forward to it, and I think it's very productive. Um, two, I, I would like to um, commend the Police Department and Arlington Human Rights Commission for their response to um, the vandalism up on Mystic Street. I, I think that they, um, in their response, they showed that Arlington is, you know, committed to diversity. We're a welcoming community, and, and that does not, um, that is, that does not represent who we are. And we are better than that, and we will continue to be better than that, and we will come together as a community to do so. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, St Steve kind of actually uh, said part of what I wanted to say. Um, I think we all acknowledge that the last few weeks have been really difficult for law enforcement across the uh, country. It's also been a time of, of great tension, I think, in a lot of uh, jurisdictions between police departments and uh, civilians, uh, particularly communities of, of, um, of color. And I think the way that our department has stepped up to really engage the community in a frank discussion of these issues, especially when we face hate incidents such as what did happen um, on Mystic Street is, is a, a credit to them. I also wanted to share this week, um, uh, I was able to, to go down and visit um, the training session that the police department had. Uh, Sheriff mm. Katusian had um, arranges for a, um, a mobile training unit. It's in a, in a um, a tractor trailer truck which is uh, aimed at de-escalation um, and um, department's invitation I was able to go and um, you know take a look at this it, it trains officers it uses uh, actually adaptive learning technology it's very high tech with a, a video screen trains officers in very difficult situations using video from their own point of view um, uh, training them on how to use either verbal commands or um, other, you know, mild uh, forms of force up to and including lethal force if, if necessary. But it's really important, um, as we've heard all of the, the um, you know, the, the, the strife in the country. I actually heard a day or two later, I heard a story about how so many jurisdictions don't have the benefit of this type of training. And it really, um, number one, um, teaches quick um, uh, response in, in very stressful situations to keep our officers safe, but also to ensure that mistakes aren't made um, in, in, in uh, very difficult situations. And um, uh, I got to witness, you know, at least one of our officers directly in this, and you could see that they were very engaged. Uh, in, in, in this training, and I think that all of our officers get to ro rotate through while the unit's there for, for a week, and, and the sheriff brings it back each, each year, and it costs us, what, like a tank of gas or something yep. to have it there. So it's, it's such a resource, and at a time when other departments are, are, are struggling with, um, with um, 
you know, unfortunate uh, incidents and, and tragedies. I think it's it's a it's a credit to us that we have that kind of training and that we have the kind of engagement with the community that Steve mentioned. So. Thank you. Uh, I don't have anything. We set our next meeting for August twenty second. Is that correct? Yes, and in the event that I really need something, we'll have a shot meeting on the eighth with just the four of you. Okay. Yeah, but right now it's the twenty second. All right. So that's a change in schedule for those of you who put it on your calendar at home. <laughs> uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you.